Good morning. My name is Chris Ndikumana. I'm the host of the Kanguka Broadcast. You are about to listen to today's broadcast translated from Kirundi to English. Be blessed. Today's Wednesday and I want to encourage you once again and tell you that if you're carrying a heavy load, you should just unload it onto God this morning. We often feel down and we can't even pray because we want to handle all our burdens by ourselves. But you need to understand that there are some problems you can solve, and there are other problems that you can't solve. That's why, in the morning, you should cast all your burdens onto God, whether you can solve them or not. That's the message I want to share with you this morning. In 1 Peter 5 verse 7, God's word tells us to cast all our cares upon Him, for He cares for us. So, if you have some burdens, no matter how big they are, every morning when you wake up, just cast them all upon Him. Every time I wake up in the morning, I put everything in His hands. I put all my problems and my entire schedule in His hands. I tell Him that I'll do what I can, but I make it clear that everything is in His hands. When you offload all your worries onto Him, He takes care of them because God's Word tells us that He Himself cares for us. It's very important to understand that you should unload everything onto God. You're starting a new day, and you don't know what's gonna happen. You don't know the calls that await you, you don't know what you'll go through, but God knows it all. It's good to understand that even when we're still sleeping at night, God already knows everything we'll go through during the day. He already knows all your activities, He knows all the challenges you'll face. The best way to achieve victory over all your problems is to get on your knees and pray every morning. You need to always start your day with God. When you start the day with God, you're demonstrating that He's very important in your life. You should start your day with the most important person in your life. That's why you should start your day with, I am, as soon as you wake up in the morning. There are many things that matter in your life, but your God should be the top priority. You have to start your day with Him. 1 Peter 5 verse 7 is a very important verse. It says that you should cast all your cares upon Him. You need to understand that you can't solve everything, you can't know it all. That's why it's good to humble yourself and put your whole day in God's hands. If you prepare your day every day, it shows that you're aware that you can't do it all by yourself. It's a sign of humility and it shows that you only want God to make a way for you. If you cast all your burdens onto Him, He takes care of you. But why does He want you to cast all your worries on Him? You have to understand that if you don't, He might just let you carry all your burdens alone because that's the choice you made. We need to realize that there are so many things God doesn't do in our lives because we don't give Him the opportunity to help us out. We don't give him the chance to rescue us because we want to do everything in our own strength. I'm not saying that you should sit around and do nothing. You have to do all you can, but before you do anything, you should put it all in God's hands. Do you present all your worries to God? Do you present all your activities, meetings, or the people you're gonna encounter to God? Or do you just wake up and you jump into your day without praying, and you do whatever you feel like doing? You need to learn to humble yourself before God so you can be assured that everything that happens today is in God's plan because you put it all in his hands from the moment you woke up. You need to know that if you invite God into your life, He's gonna show up. We go through so much, and we often try to fight our battles on our own without consulting God. I want you to understand that if you push God aside, He's gonna stay away. But if you invite Him into your life, if you open the door for Him, if you ask Him to take control and guide you, then God enters your life. He sends His angels into your life. Every time you humbly prepare your day in the morning and you declare that you can't do anything on your own, you're inviting God into your life, and He'll send His angels to help you out. You might not physically see the angels, but they're there. When you cast all your worries, burdens, and complaints on God, it shows that God is very important in your life, and that motivates Him to take action. God wants to work in the lives of those who are humble and who accept Him as their God. God takes care of you, so you shouldn't do anything without consulting Him or telling Him that you need Him. When you wake up in the morning, before doing anything, you have to kneel before God and tell Him that you can't do anything on your own. That should be your top priority. You need to start your day with gratitude and you need to place your whole day in the hands of I am. It's now time to continue our study of the book of 1 Kings. We're now in chapter 6, 1 Kings 6. Yesterday, I told you that it took 480 years after the Israelites left Egypt for Solomon to build the house of the Lord. During all that time, the Israelites never bothered to build a house for the Almighty. Solomon was the first person to build the house of the Lord. But why did no one think of building it before? Well, it's simply because it was never a priority for them. David was actually the first one to consider building a house for the Lord, but none of his predecessors ever entertained the idea because 
because it just wasn't a priority. Neither the Israelites nor any servant of God had ever thought of building the house of the Lord. And remember, David wasn't the first king of Israel. It's Saul who was the first king of Israel. Saul never even considered building a house for the Lord. But David found it unimaginable that they were living in beautiful palaces and houses while the Ark of the Covenant was housed in a tiny, insignificant space. Now, in the New Covenant, when we talk about the house of the Lord, we're not referring to a physical church or a building. Today, God's house is your body. If you didn't already know this, you need to know it. 1 Corinthians 3 verse 16 says, Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the Spirit of God dwells in you? This means that the Spirit of God dwells within us, and we are His house. So, the temple of God is not about a structure with walls. In the New Covenant, your body is the temple of God. Solomon took great care in building the house of God. In 1 Kings 6 verse 38, we can see that it took seven years to complete. I really love the fact that Solomon built the house of God before building his own house. It shows that Solomon understood what was most important and he made it his priority. He could have built his own house first, but he chose to prioritize the house of the Lord. During those seven years Solomon didn't even start building his own house. He completed the house of the Lord first and then he built his own house. Chapter 6 talks mostly about how Solomon built the house of the Lord. You'll find many details about the construction process. We'll see that it was a magnificent house, worth a fortune. Clearly, Building this house was top priority for Solomon, because he spent seven years on it. The lesson we gotta take away from this is that we need to prioritize the house of God, which is our bodies. Nowadays, many people think we should only focus on our spirits, but our bodies are also very important. You need to understand that your body doesn't belong to you, it's not your own house, but it's the temple of God. I had asked you to keep reading up to chapter 11. Let's now move to chapter 7. 1 Kings 7 verse 1 says that Solomon built his own house in 13 years. But as you can see in verse 2, Solomon built his own house after he finished constructing the house of the Lord. The following verses talk about Solomon's house. Chapter 6 talked about the construction of the house of the Lord, and chapter 7 also gives some additional details about the construction of the house of the Lord. You can read all those details in chapter 7. Let's now move on to chapter 8. We can see that the construction of the house of the Lord was completed, and everything was in order. Solomon gathered the elders of Israel in Jerusalem. Everything was ready and the Ark of the Covenant was right there too. Let me remind you again that nothing can be achieved without the Ark of the Covenant. God willing, will continue tomorrow. Please read chapter 8 and chapter 9. May, I am, bless you, and have a great day. If you're blessed or transformed by Kanguka teachings, you can send us a WhatsApp audio on plus two five six seven eight one three seven seven three three seven.